Hey everybody and welcome to today's episode and I'm really stoked for today because we're going to be looking at a new product that's released by Fujifilm. You're seeing it on day of launch. I've had this pre-production model prior to launch just to have a little look at and a little play with. But today we're going to get into the Fujifilm X-H2S. Let's get into this and we'll have a look at the camera system. So what we're going to do, we'll just have a look at the camera, have a look at the ergonomics, talk about its, its new shape and design and features. Just a disclaimer, remember the version I've got is pre-production, so it's not final version. I'm sure the hardware is, but the firmware probably still isn't. And I know that for a fact there's a question mark in the menu. But we'll have a look at it. We'll go through some of the information that I've been given, which is literally about five lines. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what you think. But I, I'm impressed. Straight, up, straight out of the box, I'm impressed. So let's get into the X-H2S. So here she is, the X-H2S. So all of you X-H1 lovers that have been waiting for a long, long time going, hey, where's the X-H2? Where's the X-H2? I don't know where the X-H2 is actually because I've just been given the X-H2S and I was expecting the X-H2. Um, but what I can tell you is the X-H2S is uh, directed more for you moviegoers, the people that are recording moving image because there's some phenomenal, phenomenal updates in this. Um, and information which we're going to get into. But um, first off, let's have a look at it. Here it is, the beautiful X-H2S. Um, and I just want to say to Fujifilm UK, thank you for allowing me to have this pre-production model prior to launch to have a little shallow dive into and have a play with. Um, it's absolutely awesome. And I thank you for the privilege. Luckily, being a Fujifilm X photographer, I have that privilege sometimes and uh, now is one of those times. I've got a little 35mm 1.4 lens on it at the moment, just for size comparisons. Um, it's looking a little different. Let's just say, ergonomically, it's looking a little different. I'll give you a little top-down view of this in a moment as well. It's looking quite different indeed. So we've only got the one dial, as you can see. One dial, now we've got an LCD, a bit like a GFX, um, which Kind of threw me for a little bit at first, but actually after playing with it more and more, I actually really like it. We've got more pronounced buttons here that are direct to the things that you're gonna want to change most. Um, we've got your ISO on the top, we have white balance on the top, um, and we'll go through these buttons when we bring up the LCD menu on screen in a moment anyway. So standard dial, uh, locking dial as always, uh, but you'll notice you've got seven custom functions on here, seven custom functions. Um, so massive for um, saving stuff, but the body is a little bit bigger. I'm now I don't have an XH1, so I'm just referring to uh, size really compared to um, XT4. So yes, you'll notice it's got the lovely finger grip that everybody in an XH who liked XH1 loved. Um, gotta say I love it and I hate it. I don't know why I hate it, but it just feels different, I guess. After a little while in your hands, you don't really notice. It's that muscle memory thing, isn't it? When you're shooting X-T4 and things, you, you kind of get used to that depth, but it does feel quite a deep grip. So those of you who want a deep grip, you're gonna absolutely love this. Absolutely love it indeed. Uh, let's look at the back of the camera quickly. Uh, yeah, we've still got the pull out flip around screen. Uh, we still have the D-pad, a Q menu, auto exposure lock button there, auto focus button there, and we've got a new thumbstick there, which actually feels quite nice to be fair. Rear thumb dials and front function dials. They don't push in like they do on the X-T4, they rotate only. Um, but the good thing is, if you've got this in a priority mode, um, if you're shooting stills or whatever, the rear thumb dial is your exposure comp without having to turn another dial or press another button, which is actually quite fun and funky. One thing I do really love about this is the connectivity on the side. Let's have a little look into that because We've got new little door hatches on here and then there are our own little hinges, which are just, they just feel great. You know, to open them and close them is so easy now. They just feel great. They're solid through and through. You've got your mic input, you've got your headphone jack built into camera. So no need for a, a vertical grip like you need on X-T4. You've got your USB-C connection as standard. They're great. The little door openings on that and hinges, beautiful build, great functionality, and really easy to get to. The only one that hasn't got that is the HDMI port, and that's still on one of those little 
dongle toggle things but here we go folks full size HDMI port what you've all been screaming for for a long time well now you've got it now you've got it there it is there it is uh, but beautiful build so far there is an option for a vertical grip we can see the trap door on the bottom there you can see that there um, so that's going to be coming no doubt I would say the difference between this and the XH2, I, I don't really know. Uh, as I say, I've only had a minimum spec on this. You're going to know today because the video will be out for, for this one. Um, and the launch will be will be here as well. But I know the XH2 is probably going to be directed more for still photographers. And I believe on rumours, I am going purely on rumours, the megapixel rate is going to be a bit higher. But overall, I really love the design of this. We've got some uh, front function buttons here, do different things now. Uh, which we'll go into very quickly. Um, but another big one for all of you that's going to love it, you'll notice in our card slots, I don't know if any of those can see that, but you'll see we've got our SD card slot, but we now have a CF Express card slot as well in this one, um, which can only mean good things on the video side of stuff. So what information did I have on this lovely camera system? It literally arrived in a, a kind of a text message to me um, from Fujifilm UK. Um, I asked for a spec sheet and this is what I got. So basically, we've got a new fifth gen sensor in there. So we've gone up from the fourth gen that we've got an XT4. Um, we've got fifth gen sensor in there. It is a 26 megapixel stack sensor, CMOS sensor. Uh, and that is powered by a new generation, fifth generation processor as well. Some basic details, you're gonna know more than me today because of launch, but um, yeah, up to 15 frames mechanical shutter, um, which is phenomenal. And I have seen on the electronic shutter in there, in the options in the menu, you can go up to 40 frames a second in electronic shutter from what I can see. Fujifilm have gone another leap forward with this in terms of the autofocusing. They have gone to town on it. So we now have a super boosted, like it's on steroids, an advanced AI face tracking uh, function in there that is on par with its big brother competition of the Sonys and the Canons, etc., etc. So I've been told. My first play on pre-production model, I'm super impressed with it. it, it it's phenomenal. Um, and not only that, I have found we do have subject tracking focus. Now, there is a section in there for animals. I have tested on my dog and it locks, eye, eye, eye focus locks on him as he's moving without any trouble at all. And it is rock solid. And this is pre-production. But I noticed there's other subjects in there as well. You've got motorbikes and boats and all sorts in there. I haven't had a chance to try those. Um, but I have tried out on my dog and it is working a treat and that is just on a standard 35mm 1.4 that I put through it. Uh, for all of you um, that really is interested in this one for the video, uh, this one can shoot up to 6K. Oh, I've seen it in there as 6.25K um, in movie shooting and 4K up to 120p, which is just, which is, is phenomenal. Uh, other specs in there, you've got 422 10-bit internal recording now in this thing, uh, which is just another great feature. As I say, I'm only covering a small summary of what's in this today because I don't have a full production model, but this is just to give you an insight into this little beast, uh, which is just, to be fair, I loved it, loved it. It takes a little while for you to get used to the buttons on the back because they are in different places, you know, that muscle memory thing. But I'm sure if you're picking up this up every day and using it all day long, a couple of days, you'll you'll be jumping back and forth like there's there's, there's no issues at all. Now, let's hook this up and let's have a look into the menu systems because one thing I've noticed, which I don't know what this is for, but I've noticed on the body, which you'll you'll probably know today, uh, behind the LCD screen, yes, this is a turny, flippy screen as before, but behind this. In the back plate of the camera, there are two holes which are threaded. Um, and I really don't know what they're for and I've had no explanation. And there is a little rubber door there as well with a connector behind it. And I don't know what that's for either. Um, as I say, you'll probably know this today on launch. I've had to record this video with pre-production way before launch. Um, so I have no other knowledge apart from that. But overall, loving the camera, the focus is just blistering uh, the the uh, AI eye focus is just phenomenal it is it is so quick uh, quicker than my XT4 which is what I'm filming this on um, just a little insight on launch day I've had great fun with this camera um, 
I've not used a 6K film in this because uh, I didn't have a CF Express card to hand in the short time that I had it, and I did only have it a very short term. Um, but I'm sure that's going to be phenomenal. I have recorded a little bit to SD card, but you do have some limitations. Um, but there is tons more information in this that um, that I, I won't be able to share in this video purely because it's not uh, um, the final version. But it's beautiful, beautiful. Only a little bit bigger than XT4 as well, um, which is kind of okay. It's a few mil, a few mil longer, and obviously a deeper grip on it. Uh, the EVF seems a bit bigger on the top, but for obvious reasons, you've got a higher refresh rate in the EVF as well. And of course, you can have a custom mode on that to boost that EVF. And when you're moving with that, there is no deviation in there at all. There's no flutter, no bending, no nothing. If you if you put that boost mode on, EVF is absolutely phenomenal. So um, they've upgraded that as well, I can see, even though I didn't get the information, but things that you notice. Let's have a little look into the menu systems and um, see what else we can see. Just as a guide, uh, this little button, uh, bottom left corner of the lens, if you want to look at it that way, you notice there's no uh, manual switch, you know, uh, focus, autofocus single, autofocus continuous switch on these anymore like we have on X-T4s and things. Um, it is now done on this button. You just press this button and you can select from there whether you want your manual focus continuous. And the other button on the front here, you know, uh, native out of the box, is for your, your levels. You, you can have that for your, your level meters in camera. Um, so you can just turn that and it cycles them through um, two different versions, 2D or 3D, whichever you want. Okay, into the menus, you've got the usual stuff. I'm just going to flick through these really quickly by page. Um, same as pretty much what you're used to in X-T4 or um, any other X-T series. Um, so pretty, pretty standard in there. Autofocus mode is good. You've still got 117 and 425 focus points if you want those. But you'll notice here on the autofocus detection, you've got that. You can turn that off on the top. That is the, uh, the button on top of the camera next to your white balance. It's been moved next to your white balance. It's been moved to there now. Uh, but below that, you'll see that you've got subject detection setting. And you can go into that and you've got animal, bird, automobile, bike, airplane, and train. As I say, I've tried it on animal and bird, and uh, it seems to be working really, really well. Uh, everything else pretty much the same. Okay, there might be some little details in that. As I say, this is not a uh, final version, so I don't know if any of this is going to be updated. You'll notice here that we do have a cooling fan setting. So definitely geared towards more video in that respect, especially, I would say, when filming 6K. Uh, flash settings, pretty much the same. Now, movie mode. We are in stills mode on this at the moment. I will turn the main um, control dial to uh, video in a moment. Uh, that is all done on the top left-hand dial now. But you'll notice in here, if we just go in this way, that um, you have your 4K, 16.9, etc., etc. Um, but... Um, if you notice just above that, we have 6.2K. Now, from what I can see in this pre-production model, that is recorded in the 3.2 aspect for cropping. Um, and you can use H264265 codec in that as well. Um, just phenomenal. And you can go up to 30p, pretty much. 29.97, 30p in 6.2K, which is just absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. High-speed recording you've got as well. Uh, 240p in full HD or through HDMI 120p. As I say, I don't know what else will be in here in the final version. Oh, going back one. Now, audio setting, this is interesting, really interesting. I know people in the video have been asking this for a long time as well. Um, and I have no further info on this. You probably will by the, uh, by the end of today when you see the official launch. But we've got our standard stuff in here, but down at the bottom of this menu, is XLR mic adapter setting. And we go into this and we can see that we've got a mic input channel, four channel, four channel XLR on camera or two channel XLR only. I have no further info on this. So we've got four channel audio monitoring via XLR and HDMI four channel output via HDMR, uh, XLR, sorry, um, and HDMI four channel output XLR. So I can only assume and I have no insider knowledge of this. I can only assume that Fujifilm will be bringing out XLR adapter, perhaps to sit on the hot shoe, so that you can use XLR mics with this um, rather than the 3.5 mil jack that we've been using. And I know it's been a request because we know that the quality of XLR mics is far better um, in terms of connectivity as well. Now you can see in my menu back then, if I just flip back quickly, 
that I do have a question mark at the bottom which I can't access, so I don't know what it does. Um, but we have a ton of stuff in here. Uh, you know, previously we had up to 400 in XT, XT4, but here we go from 50 to 100 to 200 to 360 to 720. So another update there. So if you're gonna buy this system and you wanna film in 6K, uh, time to upgrade your computer systems, I think. <laughs> That's gonna be one of those things, isn't it? Of course, you've got all the standard F logs. And if you go into your menu button on the back, then when you're in movie mode, your menu is specifically for movie. Um, you hit this little movie setting list and it kind of gives you a rundown of what's set in your camera. So there you go in that respect. Um, you can also shoot RAW and proxy. You've got proxy mode in this as well, which I can see in the menus. Uh, I've just got it on P at the moment, but you've got other options there. But yeah, there we go, 6.2K, high-speed recording, HDM output. So I don't know if uh, Fujifilm will extend the internal recording times in this new one, because yeah, as we know, the old ones were about, you know, sort of up to 30 minutes, give or take. Uh, but maybe if they've unlocked it like some other brands have, that would be nice, and maybe that's what the cooling fans are for, as well as the 6K. But that could be a good feature, um, if that's possible. But that said, as a little intro, obviously this is launch day now, but this is my pre-prod prior to launch day. I'm really impressed with this system. The build quality is second to none. The new controls and the buttons feel really nice. It's a solid build. Fujifilm do it time and time again. I don't know how they do it, but they do. Absolutely awesome camera. Really, really surprised. And uh, the video guys, especially those wanting to go up from H -X um, XH1, uh, you're going to love this, and I can't wait to see what X-H2 has got coming as well. But at the end of that, Fujifilm, thank you for sending this to me, uh, even though I only had it for a short while on a pre-prod model, but I've loved it, and um, thank you ever so much for the opportunity as always. Uh, love working with you guys. Uh, you always blow me away with stuff like this. And um, don't forget, if you like this video and what you've seen in this little short intro, then uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.